Rock and Roll Geek Show 675. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, uh, online since 2004, right. is the one and only yeah. Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name's Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Wednesday, December 23rd, 2015, when I'm recording this. It's 7.43 p.m. And by the time you get this, if you happen to be listening to it uh, the day it posts, it will be my birthday. So happy birthday to me! Yay! I'm a big 54 year... Am I 54? Let's see, I was born in 61. I, I lose track of the time. I was born in 61. This is 2015. So that one made me 54. Big 54 years old. Woo, I don't feel a day over 60. All right. Well, I came back from my trip. I, uh, thank you for, for sending me the positive response about uh, the notes from the tree stand. I only made it through four notes from the tree stand. I was planning on doing one every day, but eh, I was enjoying my vacation so much I didn't really feel like even turning on the microphone. I was that that relaxed. But I am back, friends. And when I came back, uh, when did this happen? The 17th? I came back on the 15th. So a couple of days after I came back, you know, I've been saying... Um, for so well, the news about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame happened two days after I came back. Obviously, I've been saying as as recently as the past, like maybe four months. No, when were when were the nominations announced? I don't know. Probably they were probably announced about four months ago. So so before the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations were announced, I would I kept saying Cheap Trick has never even been considered for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The next thing you know. They're nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in a special fan vote. So the way it happened, the way it worked was the supposedly the top five fan votes got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's how it was going to be this year. A special fan edition of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I guess that's how that's what they call it. I don't remember. But. Yeah, so there was a fan vote, and I went in there, and I voted for, I forget who was originally nominated, uh, Yes, The Cars, Cheap Trick, Chicago, Deep Purple, Steve Miller Band, NWA, I don't remember who else was was nominated, to be honest with you, but I went in and voted. I voted for Cheap Trick, obviously, I voted for Deep Purple, I voted for... I probably voted for yes because I thought yes deserved it. I voted for I don't know. You have to go back and listen to a recent episode or the one where I talked about it. I think I vote. Did I? I don't think I voted for the cars. Although I love the cars, but I don't think that I thought that they deserved to be in. So the way it happened was uh, the top five fan votes did are not the ones who got in. So I don't know how this worked because yes. Uh, we're in the top five. The cars were in the top five, but neither of those bands got got in. Cheap Trick was way down at number seven, and Cheap Trick got in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They are in, so that's reason to celebrate. NWA also in. They were the number twelve vote vote getter. Uh, not sure where. So the ones who got in this time were Cheap Trick, Chicago, Deep Purple, and Steve Miller. I think I think that Yes and Steve Miller and Chicago were the top vote getters. But Yes is not in, the cars are not in, but I'm pretty I have to say without with the exception of NWA who I don't think they have I mean nothing gets NWA. I'm sure they were a very uh pioneering group, but they're not rock and roll and I don't think they need to be anywhere near the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But with the exception of NWA I think all those groups deserve to be in. I also think Yes deserve to be in, although I'm not a huge Yes fan, but those guys pretty much were 
kind of responsible for uh, the pro- whole prog rock thing, them and Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. And I, will, I'll, I would venture to say that Emerson, Lake, and Palmer will probably never be in. But, hey, stranger things have happened. Cheap Trick got in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think... I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I think you might see the New York Dolls getting in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame one of these times, because I was listening to Howard Stern's show, and Meg Griffin, who was a DJ on on the um, on Sirius, she was on, on the Howard Stern After Show, and she is one of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, on the committee, and I'm pretty sure she was pretty instrumental about getting Cheap Trick in. But she says she's been really um, lobbying to get the New York Dolls in. So expect to see New York Dolls in one of these years. Maybe not next year, but possibly the year after. That's, my, that's just my guess. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that. So what I'm going to do on this episode, friends, you guessed it. So if you don't like Cheap Trick, go somewhere else this episode, friends, because uh, I'm going to play a couple other groups as well. But this is going to be predominantly Cheap Trick tonight. So... Why don't we get it started with a brand new cheap... Oh! And what a coincidence. Cheap Trick got in, and about two days later, they announced that they were signing to a new record label called Big Machine. And you could get a brand new free single just by entering your email address from Cheap Trick. You get a brand new, let me rephrase that. You can get a brand new Cheap Trick song just by entering your email address. So let's start it off with a brand new Cheap Trick song. We'll listen to it together, friends. The song is called No Direction Home.
go. Brand new cheap trick. What do I think about it? I, of course I like it. Sounds great. Is it the best cheap trick song I've ever heard? No, but it is quality music. The record is going to be called, so far, the, I think the title, I, I hope they change the title because I'm not crazy about this title, but the title they have so far is Bang Zoom Crazy Hello. It's going to be their 17th studio album, and it's the first ones, <coughs> pardon me, I'm burping up this fine Tecate, their first one since uh, the latest, which came out in 2009. It's coming out on April 1st. And a week later, they will be enshrined into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with an induction ceremony at Barclays Arena in Brooklyn. This is going to be a good one to watch because there's a lot of rock bands. And the Deep Purple one is going to be quite interesting to watch because uh, there's a lot of guys in, in, in the Deep Purple <laughs> camp who um, are getting inducted with Deep Purple. Who are who are everybody who's going to be inducted? Well, Ian, uh, what's his name? Ian Gillen will be in. Who else? Roger Glover, um, Ian Pace. And lots more. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, here, I'm finding it right here. Okay. Uh, Richie Blackmore will be in there, Ian Gillen, Roger Glover, the late John Lord, Ian Pace, Rod Evans. He was in the Mark he was uh he was in the Mark I edition, which uh was before Ian Gillen. He's gonna be in. Dave and Mark Three and Mark Four members David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes are also gonna be inducted. And uh yeah, those so that's all who's gonna be inducted from Deep Purple. Richie Blackmore. I heard that he said he has no interest in being part of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I don't know who's going to be performing. Maybe they'll all all climb up there. And uh, I don't think all those guys like each other. So that will be quite interesting. Before I continue this, why don't we thank some donors of the Rock and Roll Geek Show? Let me. So thank you to everybody who donated to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Without your donations, my friends, this show would die a horrible, horrific, putrid, stench-filled BM time at the old folks' home. So, so let's just say you go to the old folks' home at 5 p.m. to visit your friend from the dog park, Don. All right? And you get there at 5, and everybody in the entire place is having a bowel movement at the same time. You know what that smell is like? Well, that is how bad this rock and roll geek show would die without your donations, friend. All right, let me thank some people. Let me find some music. How about some cheap trick in the in the uh, background here? Mm-hmm. 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 I let the music get going. Okay. There are several ways you can donate to the show. I have a Patreon page. Patreon.com slash R&R Geek, I believe is what it is. There's a link on the show and it's at rockandrollgeek.com as well. Let me prime the pump with this fine Tecate. By the way, this is one of my favorite Cheap Trick songs. This is from Special One. I was on the Cheap Trick podcast, the uh, Cheap Talk Trick Chat podcast, and we did a track-by-track of Special One, which I don't think has aired, and I don't know if it's ever going to air, but both BJ and Ken Mills hated this song. Thought it was one of the worst Cheap Trick songs ever. I disagree. I think it's one of my favorite Cheap Trick songs of all time. Thank you to the Patreon donors. Eric stole for the $5. Thank you to Chiaki Hinohara for the $5. Thanks to Brian Springer for the $5. Thanks to Matthew Hunt for $5. Thanks to Dave Slusher, my podcast mentor and co-host of Mad at Dad. Thanks to everybody who listens to Mad at Dad. Having a good time doing it. The last episode, we were riddled with technical difficulties. I don't know if we're going to be able to salvage an episode out of that one, but thank you to everybody who's listening to that. 
Thank you to Robert Harvey for the $2. And by the way, speaking of mad at dad, I hope I don't end up making Dave Slusher mad at me like um, Jasper was a good, clean fun. Because anything I say on that show is just meant to, to try to be entertaining. And I love Dave Slusher very much, just like I love Jasper very much. Thank you to Robert Harvey for the $2. That's all the Patreon donors. Thank you. To, you can also send me a check like Jay Kumar did. He sent me a check for $50. Hey, Michael, hope you're doing well. Here's another contribution to the Rock and Roll Geek Show to keep the beer flowing and the podcast rolling. Keep up the good work. Yours in rock. Jay Kumar from Beverly, Massachusetts. Thank you to the PayPal donors. You can donate on PayPal as well. There's a link at rockandrollgeek.com. Greg Long, thank you for the $5, friend. Thank you to Dave Franco for the $10. Thank you to Dean Gillespie for the $5. Thank you to James Benners for the $10. Thanks to Richard Strom for the $5. Thanks to Sigmund Hydaster for the $10. Thank you to Andrew Howell for the $5. Thanks to Dale Roller for the $5. Thanks to Jason Shepard for the $10. Thanks to Jer O'Carroll for the $5. I got your name right this time, Jer O'Carroll. Thanks to Ralph Miller, friend of mine and friend of the show, for the $51. He usually donates like $10. He says this is a bonus donation. Thanks for taking care of Don from the dog park. Nobody should have to deal with that shit. And a bonus dollar for your line about the black tie restaurant needing to hire a black maitre d'. Still makes me laugh. Thank you for doing Mad at Dad. That line was from an episode of Mad at Dad. Da- um, Dave Slusher was talking about a, a Thai restaurant. And I said something about they should have a black maitre d'. Racist? No. I don't think so. Just an observation. Thank you to friend of mine and friend of the show, Todd Cunningham. He told me about a Rick Springfield new album coming out. I thought he was talking about Rick Nielsen had a solo album coming out, which I think Rick Nielsen might have a solo album coming out too, but I could be wrong. Excuse me, I'm burping and talking. I probably am wrong on that, but... I have two I have two of the Rick Springfield songs I may play on this episode. Thank you to Las Satvithagen for the two dollars. Thanks to Jeffrey Canaparoli for the two dollars. Thanks to Steven Mascord for the five dollars. Thank you to John Skiller for the two dollars. Thanks to BJ Lisco for ten dollars. Thank you to Michael Villoria for the two dollars. Thanks to Chris Stanley for the ten dollars. Patrick Shanahan for five dollars. Thank you to Dave Jackson and the School of Podcasting for the $10. Thank you to Michael Stevens for the $10. Thank you to Dan McBride for the $5. Thanks to a friend of mine, Michael Mack, for the $2. Thank you to John Bavari for the $5. Ah. Thank you to Peter Spark for the $2. Thanks to Chris Harrison for the $10. Thank you to Delirium Record for the $5. Thanks to Mario Zoth for the $2. Thanks to Mark Bridges for the $50. Thank you so much, Mark Bridges. I take a sip of this fine Tecate to you. Ah. Thank you to David Ivey for the $5. Thank you to Kelly Mitchell for the $5. Thanks to Paul Fondry for the $10. Thanks to Jeff Bielicki for the $10. Thanks to Adrian Boshan, Bosh Rock in the Forum for the $2. Thank you to everybody who donated, especially the $50 donations from Ralph Miller and Jay Kumar and Mark Bridges. And all the little donations, the small amounts add up, friends. Every bit is appreciated. Even a 50 cents Patreon would be appreciated. I take a sip of this fine Tecate to everybody who donated.
There you go. All right. Speaking of cheap trick, uh, Rolling Stone, uh, who sent me the link to this? Um, was it Jeff's? Was it, uh, who sent me the link to this? Tim Smith, the rock and roll runner, sent me the link to this. And it's and everybody's been posting this on the Facebook. Bunny Carlos comes out and talks about the possible Rock and Roll Hall of Fame reunion because you wonder who's going to play drums with Cheap Trick. Because you know Bunny's not in the band anymore. Dax is playing. I think that Rick Nielsen wants, I think they probably all just want Dax to play, but Bunny's the one getting nominated, not Dax. So there's a chance that Bunny could be out there playing. You could see Bunny, and you could actually see a full-fledged Cheap Trick reunion. There's an interview on rollingstone.com, and I'm going to reenact the interview for you. I'm going to play the part of, who is the guy interviewing him? Andy Green, who also interviewed Rick Nielsen about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's on ricknielsen.com. It's a really good interview. He, the, you can tell Rick Green or Andy Green uh, knows his cheap trick. All right, so I'm going to play Rick Green's part, and I'm going to play Bunny Carlos's part, okay? Should I find some cheap trick music to play in the background? Eh, maybe I should. Let's see here. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to play any cheap trick in the background. I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to be silent. All right, we're going to... little radio play here. Oh, fuck it. I'm going to find some cheap trick in the background. Let me see if I can find... Uh, Let's see, artist, cheap trick, artist, we want to go iTunes, cheap trick. A good long one would probably be something from Dream Police called, would that be Gonna Raise Hell? Is that on, is that on Dream Police? Yeah, sure, why not? All right, I'm Andy Green and I'm Bunny Carlos. I hope this bit doesn't die, friends. What would Andy Green sound like? Hello! Hello, can I speak to Bunny? Yeah, this is Bunny. Hi, Bunny, this is Andy. We have an interview scheduled. Yeah, yeah. This is Bunny. Bunny, congratulations on the Hall of Fame. It's a definitely about time you guys got in. Thanks. It was quite a surprise, actually. Why was it a surprise? Well, nobody gets in the first year, I figured. You're going to perform, right? Yeah, as far as I know, I am. Why do you say that, Bunny? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, the Hall of Fame is inducting the four original... All right, I'm getting cross here. The Hall of Fame is inducting the four original members. I assume that... All right, take two. <laughs> Why do you say that, Bunny? Well, the Hall of Fame is inducting the four original members, and I assume that is who they want to get up there and play, man. Well, I spoke to Rick the other day, because we're good friends, and he envisioned a scenario where there would be two drummers on Hall of Fame night. How would you feel about that, Bunny? <laughs> well... Rick has visions, I guess. He's a good dad, and he supports all of his sons, and he probably thinks it'd be great if his boy was up there playing along. I can see why he would lead the conversation that way. How would you feel about that, Bunny? I had a piece of that in 76. Rick talked about that with you. I read the interview, but his timeline was way off. I read that, and I was like, what the hell is he talking about? Here's what really happened, Andy. What happened was, is that in April of 1976, Epic Records was flying out the sinus when I tripped over a light case after a gig and I broke my fucking arm. I'm ad-libbing a little bit here, friends. For entertainment purposes. We called the next morning and said, don't go to the airport, Bunny broke his arm. They thought Mercury or somebody was trying to sign us, so they offered us like $25,000 more on top of the deal. We were like, no, we're not holding out for real money. 
Bunny broke his arm. The band ain't playing. We tried a couple of drummers, but they couldn't keep up. So we flew out Hank Ransom, and I got him a set of drums, though I wound up playing along with one arm in case he pooped out halfway through a song. (laughs) They saw one of our last shows with Hank, signed us, and then Hank went home. It was the last we ever saw of him for about five years. Then about a month later, we signed the deal, the four of us. That was in late July, and we were in... And then we went in September and started tracking the record. So they did see the band with one and a half drummers, but they never signed five guys. It was never double drummers like Rick claims it was. Very interesting, Bunny. You know, a lot of fans are confused as why you left the band. Can you explain what happened? Me and the singer don't get along very good. A couple days later, before Austin City Limits in 2010, we had a big argument on the phone about scheduling for the summer and all this kind of stuff. All right, I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to interject my commentary right here. Okay, let me take you some of this fine Tecate. Ah, I was at South by Southwest in Austin when that happened in 2010. Cheap Trick was playing. They were doing a free concert in Austin. Jasper and I were walking around. We went to a guitar show in the convention center. And there was Robin Zander looking around at guitars. Me and Jasper and I, if I can be grammatically correct, were starstruck, obviously. But we went over and talked to to Robin, who was very cordial to us, because there was a rumor going around that Bunny wasn't playing the show. And we went up, we got our pictures taken. We, you know, we said, hey, we're big fans, blah, blah, blah. You know, can I take my picture with you? And I said, and I said to, to Robin, I said, uh, so is Bunny not playing the show? He goes, well, no, Bunny's back is hurting. We're all getting a little bit old. My back's hurting too, but Bunny's not going to play the show. So <clears throat> according, to, according to Bunny, he got into a fight with, with uh, Robin the day of the show they were gonna a couple days they were they were also when they were playing south by southwest they were doing austin city limits so when we saw robin zander robin zander said that bunny wasn't playing because his back was hurt okay that's what he told us all right back to the interview i'm gonna take back take it back to that question we take uh this back too okay so i can have more time a lot of fans are confused as to why you left the band. Can you explain what happened? Well, me and the singer don't get along very good. And by the way, I knew there were rumors of this. I've been uh, that was quite uh, common knowledge. A couple of days before Austin City, that was me talking. Now I'm back to Bunny. A couple of days before Austin City Limits in 2010, we had a big argument on the phone about scheduling for the summer and all this kind of stuff. We'd argued before over 40 years, all of us had. In the middle of the night, he called the office and said, I can't work with this guy. He hates me. He didn't want me at Austin City Limits. I said, okay, if you don't want me there, we need to work out some kind of arrangement since I'm a quarter member of this band. And they were like, we don't want you there. Can we use your drums? I was like, deja vu all over again. So we just drew up a contract that said, I don't tour with the band, but I'm a full member of the band. We've all got these corporations. The touring company said, oh, excuse me. We got all these corporations. The touring company said, if you quit touring, you lose your vote. I wasn't going to let that shit happen, man. I'm a full member of this fucking band, motherfucker. Again, I'm ad-libbing, all right? So we drew up a piece of paper, and a couple years later, the checks stopped coming. I met with Scott Borchetta. That was something special, let me tell you, man. And then I had to sue them in federal court to get my money back. We did a settlement last spring, and it's all hunky-dory. That's the short story of it. Drink break here. All right, back to Andy Green here. 
regroup, Butler. It's kind of hard doing two voices. I Kudos to Phil Henry for managing to pull it off. I thought I read something about you wanting to do shorter shows because you had back issues. Is that true? I don't like doing 25 songs. I think that just kills the audience. I think the show should be 17, 18, 19 songs and encores. Robin wanted to do longer shows. All right, I'm interjecting here now again. As a huge Cheap Trick fan, I'm for, I vote for doing 40 songs. All right, back to Bunny Voice. Afterwards, he was like, we wanted to do longer shows, and he didn't want that. I did have back surgery in 2001, but I've been fine since then. I'm playing a two-hour show tonight with my local bar band, one of my little side projects. I play every day, man. I had a bad back, but the guys fixed it. I got doctors and shit. Well, what was the basis of your disagreement with Robin over the scheduling? Can you repeat that again? I didn't hear what you said there, Andy. Yeah, I said... What was the basis of your disagreement with Robin over the scheduling? <laughs> All right, now he's uh, suffering succotash. All right. Well, the final straw was we were offered 100 Sergeant Pepper shows in Las Vegas with a huge back end. He only wanted to do 50. I said, why do you want to do 50? And he said... I have to take my daughter to kindergarten in September. I don't want her to go to school in Las Vegas. I smartly replied something like, we're scheduling shows around your daughter's kindergarten class. And then he was like, fuck you ass, you fucking asshole. Then I just hung up the phone. People tell me to get fucked. I hang up the phone, man. That happened two days in a row. There you go. So let me that's a, take that as a warning, Andy Green. If that's your real name, don't tell me to fuck off because I'll hang up the phone, you motherfucker. Okay, I wasn't going to say anything. So have you guys ever spoken since then? I saw that little guy at a settlement conference a year ago, but we don't speak. No, we don't speak. Somebody sent me a leak from Tampa Bay the other day where he said he was going to call me, but he never called. <laughs> I ain't heartbroken over it. It's not the end of the world. Do you think the Hall of Fame might be... Okay. I can't. Take two. (laughs) Fuck. Do you think the Hall of Fame night will be awkward since you'll have to play with them? Nah, I'm assuming everybody's going to make nice. Me too. I have no agenda here. I'm going to be nice to the guys. They'll probably be nice to me. Nobody wants to be embarrassed. I won't get up there and be like, fuck these guys. I ain't Jeff Beck. You remember when he got up and nailed the yard burst? No, no, I didn't really see it, but I I heard I think it was kind of half joking. Sure. But if I did that, people won't get the joke. I ain't gonna do that. I got class, man. I'm Bunny fucking Carlos, and don't you forget it. Remember the guys in Blondie fought pretty bitterly at the podium. You know, they really did a number on their original bass player and the guitar player. There was a lot of bad blood there. I know Clem, Clem Burke. And some of those guys were not necessarily on Deb and Chris Stein's side about that shit. I tried to talk to Clem about it. I mean, such a highlight day of your career, you should try not to wreck it, man. Did the settlement fix all the issues you had? I mean, were you happy how it was resolved? Well, I went after the money I was supposed to be getting. That part's functioning properly. That's all I can really say about that. Because you see, part of the settlement was I ain't allowed to talk about that shit. Do you get any money from the ongoing concerts? They're paying me back what they owe me. I'm still a quarter owner of the business, so I get a certain amount of profits from that. But I told you, I can't talk about what the settlement was. Well, buddy, 
You see any scenario where you'd return to the band on the road? <laughs> I don't see it happening. Rick's got a gig here. Rick's kid got a gig here, and Dad loves that. I'm sure Rick would rather have his kid gets paid than Rick supports his kid. Even besides that, any friendship we had went away when I had to file a federal lawsuit. That cost a bucket of fucking money. Going after these guys wasn't pleasant. The friendship sort of frittered away then, you know what I mean? Do you miss it personally? I mean, do you... Do you miss playing those songs every night? Getting up on a big stage and people cheering for you, that's pretty rewarding. Actually, it's really rewarding. But I'm getting up on stage tonight and a room full of people are going to be cheering for me. I don't miss going to airports and hanging out in hotel rooms, I'll tell you that. Is it weird to picture them playing without you? Well, musically, I'll be honest with you, it sounds a little strange to me when I hear things. But we did it for 30-something years. I knew most of these guys for 10 years before the band formed, but that's not strange. It's not that strange. I mean, how do bands end? Money, sex, drugs, whatever. This is probably how bands end. Well, I gotta tell you, buddy, fans are pretty bummed. I mean, they were connected to the four original guys, you know? Hey, man, we played great together. Band had a great feel. When I was drumming with him, it sounded just like Cheap Trick. When Tom Peterson left in the 80s, we used to say, we sound like three quarters of Cheap Trick. We had a good bass players up there. A lot of good guys, but it just wasn't the same. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Vern? I mean, Andy? Well, at least the fans will be able to see you all together one last time at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a gas, man. Are you going to shake Robin's hand and smile? Of course. Like I said, I got no revenge agenda. I won't be like, let me set the record straight. People, fuck that shit. Is you think there's going to be any scenario where they refuse to let you play drums that night? Is that possible? If they do, I think the hall will do what they did with KISS. They'll be like, well, fuck it, Dan. Don't play. That doesn't really do much for anybody. These guys got a pro- record to promote. They want the band to be up there playing. Well, I asked Rick point blank, and he didn't give me a firm answer. He said, well, uh, he'll be invited. Well, man, I was invited by the hall. So take that shit and stick it up your fucking asses, motherfuckers. I'm Bunny Carlos. That's... Me! All right. <laughs> there you go. There was a reenactment of the Rolling Stone interview between Andy Green and Bunny Carlos. Great interview. <sighs> now I lost my voice. <sighs> how does Bunny? I mean, how does Phil Hendry do it? I don't know. That's why Phil Hendry is a genius. Oh, I'm exhausted, man. (laughs) Jeez, I hope that bit went okay because it wore me the hell out. All right. A little break from Cheap Trick right now. Uh, My friend Sven from Torpedo Head uh, used to be in the Space Brains. His name is Sven Space Brain. His band called Torpedo Head. He sent me the link to the free Cheap Trick download. And he also sent me an MP3 of his band. He said, I'm giving you this cheap trick. Please play, play it alongside my band, Torpedo Head. <coughs> and he asked that I please do a listening with Butler of this Torpedo Head song. So let me see if I can find the listening with Butler. Here you go. It's time for listening with Butler. A waiter. That isn't the way to I my dinner, Butler. Well, wow, I, I blew my voice butler, out, man. Can I? Maybe somebody's name is Butler. You have a point. An idiotic one, but a point. With Michael Butler from the Rock and Roll Geek Show. All right. Okay. Here is a brand new 
song from Torpedo Head with my friend Sp- Sp- uh, Sven Space Brain from Torpedo Head. Let me, let me change beers here. I'm drinking uh, Tecate out of the Yeti cooler. So I need to load up another one here. Love this Yeti uh, beer koozie. $30, but money well spent. Finish up this last little bit of backwash in the old one here. I got to be honest, I'm a little peeved at Sven <clears throat> for not giving me the exclusive first right to play this song. He It was up on, I think it was up on Punk Radio Cast or one of those things before that. Was it Punk Radio Cast? I'm not, I don't think it was Punk Radio Cast. What was? Now I need to find uh, Sven's message here. <clears throat> it wasn't Punk Radio Cast. It was. Uh, okay, what is? It? I don't remember. It was one of these. One of those punk rock. Um, one of those punk rock streaming radio stations. Sorry, sorry. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, Sven, I don't remember. It's Punk Radio Cast, or one of those things. Punk Radio Net or something. Anyway, they were playing it. Should have been me got the, got the uh, exclusive because I'm the one who's been supporting Sven since it was in the Space Brains when none of these people even knew what a podcast was. Okay, I'm not bitter, though. Not at all. Neither is Bunny, and neither am I. All right. I will not let that affect my score of this song, okay? I'm going to give it a... Out of, I'm going to give it all. One out of uh, one being I hate it, a 10 being I love it, okay, on the score. Or I can just give it a one or a half or, or a zero. Why don't I do that? I'll give it a one half or a zero, all right? The song is called Drunk on Sunday from Torpedo Head. Here you go. Drunk on Sunday. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give my I'm gonna give my thoughts while it's playing. Okay, so I like the intro, I like the good riff, uh, the verses, I like mm, a little a uh, little super shit six 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 maybe for my taste, but and not melodic enough, but it's it's good still. Okay, back it up, back it up. I like the B section a lot. This is the pre chorus or whatever. I like the chorus too.
there you go. Brand new torpedo head. I'm going to give it a plus one, a big plus one. I like the song. So there you go. Torpedo head. That song is called Drunk on Sunday. All right, how about back to Cheap Trick? So they played in they played up in Napa on Friday. I had a gig on Thursday with the Butlers, and then Friday they played up in Napa. Tickets were like 100 bucks. I couldn't go up to Napa. Then they played on Sunday uh, down in San Jose, and I could have went. I could have got tickets for like, on Cra- I saw on Craigslist for like 35 bucks. And by the time Sunday, I had been so burnt out because I had not had a night to rest. I just could not go. I could not bring myself to, to buy tickets. To deal with meeting up with somebody on Craigslist because tickets were a hundred dollars face value or sixty sixty dollars face value or something like that. They were playing at the same place I saw Judas Priest at the uh, Civic Center in San Jose. <clears throat> I would like to have went. I know Billy went. Billy Rowe and his girlfriend went. Uh, I think Ralph Miller went. Some other friends went. I would. I looking back, I wish I would have gone, but. When it was that time of night on Sunday, I was extremely burnt, and I, just, I wanted to just lay down in front of the television and just not think about anything. So that's what I did. I, I flaked on Cheap Trick, so I apologize. But I looked at their set list, and they played a song they haven't played before called... Um, called Heart on the Line, which I have a feeling is going to be on their new album as well. They've been playing Bang, Zoom, Hello, and they've been playing, uh, I think they've been playing No Direction as well, No Direction Home. But they played this one in San Jose, which is on the Red Ant sessions. It's a it's a it's an outtake from the Red Ant album. It is called Heart on the Line, which I like this song a lot. A lot of people don't really like this song, but I really like this song. That's what I'm going to play for you right now. This song is called Heart on the Line. Heart on the Line. All right. Oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to stop here. I'm going, to, I'm going to try doing something. I'm going to talk up the post, okay? So I saw Cheap Trick on Sunday. I didn't really see him, but I'm going to say I did. I was at the big Cheap Trick show on Sunday. They played a brand new song. I got a world exclusive for you. This is brand new. It's called Heart on the Line. Not too bad.
there you go. That is on the Red Ant demos. It'll probably be on the new album. I'm looking forward to a new Cheap Trick album. I really, who isn't? Uh, where did I think of the latest? The, so the last three albums that they did, um, let's see, it was uh, Rockford, the latest, and what was... Uh, well, just Rockford and the latest. Was there another one between Rockford and the latest? I don't remember. <laughs> Shit, I need to look. Now I'm losing my cheap. I'm losing my mind on Cheap Trick. Anyway, of the last Cheap Trick albums, I like Rockford a lot better than I like the latest. Although latest was okay, the L- latest was good. It wasn't just okay. It was good, but I like Rockford a lot more. I'm going to play something from Rockford. This is one of my favorite songs off Rockford. This is called Give It Away. There you go. All right. I think I'm going to wrap this thing up. It is close to my birthday. I want to get this thing posted before my birthday. I should play Come On Christmas, but I think everybody's heard that. I'm going to play something. Before I play the final song, I want to thank everybody for um, listening this year. Thank you for being a friend of the Rock and Roll Geek Show. I really appreciate it, friends. I'm going to do my top 14 albums of the year coming up either next week or the week after not sure yet. I, I, it's going to take me a while to figure out which are my top 10 albums. It, it's usually a top 10, but last year, I think, the last two years, I think it was a top 14. So there were a couple of ties in there. So I need to, to gather my list, check it twice, and listen to all the, all the albums. So give me your suggestions, please. Rock and roll geek at gmail.com. Give me your suggestions of, give me your top tens of 2015. And I will include those as some of those as well. I'm either going to do that next week or the week after. 
Okay, so I know people were asking if this this episode is going to be a best of 2015. This episode is obviously not. Obviously not. It's a tribute to Cheap Trick. I hope you like Cheap Trick, friends, because I do. They're my favorite band, and I know they're a lot of people's favorite band. So I am, I'm glad to see them in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, even though I still don't put much faith in that place. It's a boys club, a rich boys club. It's a we're cooler, we're cooler music geeks than you club. All right, but Cheap Trick is getting rec- the recognition they deserve. If there's any one band that deserves to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it is Cheap Trick. Who do you think is going to induct them this year? <clears throat> my get, my vote would I guess my vote would be probably uh, Joe Perry because they're Joe Perry's favorite band. They played at his wedding. So I don't, but I don't know who's going to inter- who's going to induct them. Let me know who you think will induct them. Rock and Roll Geek at gmail.com or post it on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, or just post it on my Facebook page, Rock and R and R Geek. I don't really manage the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page. It was started by somebody else, and I have approval if people sign up for the Rock and if people request to join the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, go ahead and I will approve you, friends. But you can also just, I mean, I never saw why you should have a Rock and Roll Geek Eye uh, Facebook page when you can just go to my Facebook page because that's what all I do on my, sh- on my Facebook page anyway is talk about the rock, promote Rock and Roll Geek Show or Butler's or Feather Witch gigs. So, <clears throat> but anyway, so, but anyway, okay. But anyway, there is a Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page. I guess it's taking the place of the forums since the forums are pretty much dead on rockandrollgeek.com. All right, where was I going with this? I don't know. Oh, oh, go on there. Say who you think should induct them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. All right, there you go. Or send me an email, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. You can find me on the Facebook R&R Geek, or you can find the Facebook Rock and Roll Geek page, like I said. You can find me on the Twitter, R&R Geek. You can find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. It's my birthday. I'm 54 years old. I'm going to celebrate by, we're going to go to a French place. They're having a crisp, down the street from my house is a French restaurant called Shushu, and they have a Christmas Eve, uh, pri- uh, like a three-course fixed dinner. And we're going to go to that, and then we're going to come home and relax and get up in the morning and um, exchange our presents. I'm having some people over. We're going to be having an Italian Christmas dinner this this time on Christmas Day. Uh, usually we have the crab feast. It's been a tradition that I created in, in my home. But this year, the crab, are, the crab season is canceled so far in California because of some kind of fungus that it, or some kind of algae or something that's floating around in the ocean that they, they say that the crabs are in some of the crabs in the in the state are infected with this algae and it makes it makes them where they're they will cause health health problems if you eat them at least that's what they're saying so they canceled crab season First time in a long time since I've been to San Francisco. It's the first time that crabs have not been available for Christmas. So we're gonna we're gonna have this Italian Sunday gravy. I went to Luca Deli today and got ten boxes of homemade ravioli. I'm gonna make the Italian Sunday gravy with two kinds of Italian sausage, um, like five pounds of meat. I did an episode of Cooking with Butler a long time ago. Google Cooking with Butler Italian Sunday Gravy and you'll see me making it. It's very delicious. I'm going to make a a vegetarian version as well for um, my friend Mick Punk and his girlfriend Stephanie who are also coming over for Christmas. We're going to have a small affair at my house. Just some very, very close friends. And yeah, that's what we're going to do on Christmas. I'm looking forward to a day off and just relaxing and Having some good food. All right, so that's enough of me yapping. Let's close out with one more Cheap Trick song. This is a mariachi version of Surrender, and I like this a lot. I just, I had known about this song for a while. It's been in my playlist, but I just stumbled across it, and I kind of grew to love it again. So I'm going to play that for you, and we're going to get the hell out of here. Here's Cheap Trick doing a mariachi version of surrender i would think it was for a tequila company hornito hornitos hornitos i don't know how you pronounce it have a great christmas friends we'll talk to you next week and happy birthday to me thank you to everybody who donated 
And I'll see you. I'll see you when I see you, friends. We'll talk to you next time. Just the other day I heard of the soldiers falling off Some Indonesian junk that's going round Mother's alright, daddy's alright We just live a little weird Surrender, surrender But don't give yourself away It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.